Hello, all attendees. I'm your host, Brian Hernandez. Welcome to the PMQ webinar series. Uh, it's been a while since I've been behind the chair for one of these, and I'm very excited. Um, we're going to be joined today by my good friend, John Scully of Pizza Cloud. He is the head decision maker, head bottle washer, um, pretty much does everything there. And if you call Pizza Cloud nine times out of 10, he's going to answer the phone. So uh, today we're going to be talking about machines, uh, multiple methods, and how you can deal with phone calls while you're understaffed, basically taking the machines and the technology of today and putting it to use for us dealing with things like labor shortages and, and over basically just lots of demand on an understaffed uh, facility. So John, without me stumbling awkwardly any further, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about Pizza Cloud, and then we can jump right into what everybody showed up for. Okay. Uh, I am John Scully, president and founder of Pizza Cloud. And um, as soon as Brian makes me presenter, I'll actually show my screen. There we go. Let me show my screen. Pick the appropriate screen. Main monitor. Pick the right screen. I got too many screens here. There we go. Hey, hey. Um, okay. So, uh, topics we're going to be covering here today. I'm mainly going to focus on text messaging, which is a new service that we are offering. Um, and then if people are interested after that, I'll go into some of the other factors, uh, call centers, some other things you can do uh, to allow people to work from home, centralized call handling, and so on. Those topics we've covered in other webinars previously. So after I get through all the text messaging stuff, uh, I'll just kind of ask if people are interested in that and cool. if people stay on we'll continue absolutely and i just so, uh, at, at this point just let everybody know they can ask their questions here on, on the your dashboard on the i believe it's on the right side of my screen there's a little questions tab you put your questions there i'll be monitoring it and we can make sure that john gets to it um we can either address it in real time or after he's gone through some of the information so just letting you guys know right. we're always there and looking at the questions Yep, feel free to jump in. Um, this text messaging is a real moving target. We're adding a lot of features uh, almost on a daily basis on it right now. Uh, we've had a, a pretty stunning response from our customers as we've only rolled this out to a small number of people so far. Everyone is really interested in it and really happy with it. So uh, what we're gonna talk about here is, first of all, what is going on with text messaging right now? Because there are some profound changes in the industry which a lot of companies have ignored and are about to run into a wall on this coming up on august 31st uh, and then the features we're going to be talking about are things at the simplest side having the phone system offer callers a text message um, I'll go through in detail what that's about. And then there's the things like delivery notifications from your point of sale system or uh, reservation, your table is ready, notifications, and then outbound marketing, sending coupons out to people and how you can do that safely under the new regulations. After that, again, I'll talk about things like what can you do to let people take phone orders working from home without spending a lot of money on hardware or anything and my mouse is gone there it is okay so in 2020 the sec imposed new regulations on text messaging which is mainly known as sms short message service prior to that companies were using the p2p the peer-to-peer -peer or person-to-person um, text messaging system to send bulk messages sometimes to thousands or tens of thousands of people. And of course, there was no real tracking on this. There was no easy way to separate out different people's traffic. And uh, spam text messaging was starting to get out of control. And of course, that's not what they intended that for. So under the new regulations, they've really tightened this down and said P2P is for exactly what it says, person to person. And companies that are sending out any kind of bulk messaging are supposed to use the A2P or application to person messaging platform, which is way more complex. Uh, 
the good news in 2020 was that they said peer to peer, true peer to peer is not considered automatic and falls outside of certain parts of the regulation. But they clearly stated that to be peer to peer, the message sender individually hits send on every message sent. Now, what's happened, is, uh, and then going on in the application to person, which means um, uh, it, it's a system. If it's a system sending it, then it falls under A2P, and you are supposed to have people opt in. They have to have a mechanism to opt out. And things have to be tied to campaigns, which is a whole new complexity. The uh, a lot of the companies that are out there, a lot of the texting companies that are out there, even some of the largest ones like Twilio, have simply stated, "Well, our system isn't really doing bulk messaging. Our system, even if it's sending out ten thousand, uh, sending a message to ten thousand people, it sends it as ten thousand individual messages." So we're simply going to continue using P2P messaging. But that's not the FCC's views on it, and that's not the carrier view on it. They, they're all saying, well, if there's not a person hitting send 10,000 times, then it's not peer-to-peer. -peer. And on August 31st, they're going to start blocking that traffic. Wow. So, a yeah, yeah. And people are not talking about this. Um, this was a kind of a surprise to me. I had missed it until hmm. back about five months ago when one of our carriers who we were doing peer-to-peer -peer, P2P text messaging through announced, we're no longer offering peer-to-peer -peer text messaging and A2P is too complicated. So we're not going to offer that either. So we had to switch to a different carrier and we had to do it with A2P. And when I say it's complicated, it, it is a lot more complicated for us but we're making it simple for our customers. So the, and, and I just wanna say the carriers on the FCC are very serious about this. They are absolutely determined that they are not going to let what's going on with robocalling happen with text messaging, just like they're trying to clamp down on the robocalling and eliminate it. They're clamping down on the text messaging. But if you think about it, the only way to eliminate bad actors sending out millions of crap messages is to have some mechanism to track good messaging, to track people that are following the rules and sending things out properly. And that means that traffic has to be tied to campaigns. Literally, we have to go into a carrier and create a campaign and say what type of traffic it is is it customer care, is it delivery notifications? Is it marketing or polling or public service announcements? It was actually about 30 types. And we tell it a use case. We say it's retail or coming from a government agency or whatever. We give a description of it, give sample messages and have to answer a bunch of questions. Are we doing opt-in? Are we doing opt-out? Are you implementing help on it? Things like that. And, uh, and, and there's a lot more questions below here. If you answer the questions wrong, then the campaign just doesn't get approved and you can't send the traffic out. Now, one of the things that we did is we worked with the carriers, with their legal people, and asked them very specific questions. Um, if we have people say, calling into a phone system, and you hear, thanks for calling Bob's Pizza, to receive a text message with links to our online ordering, press one, to speak to our staff, press two, and people press one on that. Do I have to do a campaign for every store, or can I do a shared campaign and put a lot of people on it? And they said, okay, for that traffic, you can do a shared campaign. Then I went on to, what about delivery notifications? And they kind of grudgingly agreed that delivery notifications from a point of sale system, you could also do shared campaigns because in both cases, it is totally opt in. You placed an order. You said, that, yes, send me delivery notifications. You're going to get one message or two, whatever. And that's it. it the system is not going to 
message you again and and try to sell you something or send you something about extended warranties on your car, you're just going to get the message you asked for, and that's it. And because of that, they're allowing us to do shared campaigns. That's important because there's actually a cost per campaign, not only the administrative cost of setting them up, but we literally have a monthly cost for a campaign to be sitting there before we've sent any messages on it. So again, because a lot of these companies have simply exited uh, the texting industry and others right now they're saying, we're absorbing these extra costs while we lobby the FCC to change these regulations. And they're just not gonna be successful on that. There, there's no way. On August 31st, these rules get enforced because the rules are in place right now, but they're not being enforced. So some of the rules, and these are things we've done for you, are you have to implement uh, spam control, um, stop, resume, and help messages. So in other words, every message that goes out has to have at the end of it uh, to cease, you know, some wording of to, to stop receiving these messages, reply stop. And then if you send stop, you get a message saying, you will not receive any further messages to restart this or to unblock it, send resume. And you also have to implement some form of help, which tells them how they can reach a person, uh, which again, in this case, the help response is you can call us at the number that you just texted and a person will answer. So uh, we're, we've implemented that in our platform. So if if your POS system is sending text messaging through us, we'll be attaching that to the end of the message. So it's already there. And when somebody sends stop, we'll stop the messaging. So the POS system, regardless of whether the POS system or the phone system is doing it, we're doing it in between. And that's really the important thing here that, that we're implementing these things um, kind of in the middleware. So, um, what kind of tutoring are we talking about? Again, the simplest form, and we're getting great results with this on the people we've turned it up uh, for already, is to kind of text enable the phone system. Thanks for calling Super Pizza to receive a text message with links to our online ordering, press one. To speak to our staff, press two. Between five and 10% of callers press one, get the text message, hang up, and then evidently order online. Um, we're, we've already setting this up so that it can track. So if you've ever pressed whichever button it is to get the text message, now you stop hearing that message. And also that if you've already heard it, say, three times, you'll stop hearing it so that we're not annoying people with it, just offering them this option. We can also, of course, put it into the hold music message loop so while somebody is in queue, they're hearing that option, press one now to receive a text message to order online. Um, that's, that's working very well. We're already seeing you know, customers report back to us that they're seeing an increase in the percentage of web orders. Not, not an enormous increase, might be 5%, might be you know, 10%, probably I don't think we'll see more than 10%, but we've had people report a 5% jump in web orders. That's and that's, that's a big deal. That's noticeable. It's a big deal because everybody's having trouble with phones, with labor, answering the phones. Yeah. So anything you can do to drive it to web ordering. And of course, I'm a phone company. So it seems like I'm, you know, this is not a good business, but you know, it is because you whatever we can do to, yeah, suited to keep our customers happy. Every, yeah. Yeah. So then the other types of messaging are handling inbound messaging on the store telephone number. And we have several ways to do that. The outbound messaging coming from the point of sale system. So I already mentioned the details on the phone system, PBX doing it. So I covered that already. Inbound messages, um, kind of the default minimum thing is a static response. Um, one of the interesting things we found is the instant that we turn on SMS for 
your existing store telephone number, it starts getting text messages from people with the most common one being, how late do you open? And the next one being, can I order by text? <laughs> can I order a pizza by text? Mm -hmm. uh, I do question, I don't understand that. If I have a mobile phone in my hand and I don't want to call you, I don't know why I wouldn't use your web ordering. I don't know why I would want to place an order by text message and have a whole <laughs> conversation, but evidently people do. I do not understand the youths of today, <laughs> so <laughs> whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but so the minimum response is uh, something along the lines of, we do not handle inbound messages on this number, but here are links to our website and online ordering. So again, if somebody just randomly texts your store, we could send them back the hours, you know, and of course we could do some very basic uh, reading of that message. So if they seem to be asking for the store hours, we could send them the store hours. If they ask about placing an order, we send them links to online ordering, or we could just include all of that in a single static response. The second thing that's kind of a step up from that, we now have a mobile app, which we're rolling out to customers where it's both a soft phone where you can have an extension on the phone system on your mobile phone, which is great for people that want to, again, answer calls from home to take orders remotely because you don't need to have a physical phone. But we also can route text messages to it. So we have a few people now where they have a staff member or two in the store who have the mobile app. If somebody texts the store, it comes up on the mobile app, and that way you could just have the conversation with the customer, maybe take an order, or they're asking about catering or whatever it is, without your point of sale system needing to be directly involved. Because like the phone call, you're just conversing with the customer. And that's important because very few point of sale systems have direct text message support. but if any of them do have it, we could route the calls to the POS system. So if your point of sale system has text message capability, we can route the message to the point of sale system. They pop up the customer. You're having a conversation with them on the POS and you take the order. I, sh I will mention AI here because I have looked at four or five AI place your order by text message companies. I have yet to find one that I do not consider a horrific waste of time. Um, there's no I in the artificial intelligence. It's just, they're just dreadful. Um, if anybody, if, if anyone knows of one that appears good, let me know. <laughs> But so far, they, they're just junk. Um, all they do is annoy your customer that's trying to place an order through them. All right. Now we get into outbound messaging. Obviously, the, the most obvious one is the delivery notifications. Uh, again, this is very clean traffic. Um, you're not really going to get opt-outs. You're not going to get spam complaints. Still have to comply with the rules, but we handle that part for you. So again, if your point of sale system supports text message delivery notifications or reservation notifications, you know, your table is ready, that kind of thing, um, or your, your order is ready for pickup, whatever, then we can proxy those for the POS system and we still handle the stop messages and all of that. So if somebody does reply that way, we then block their number. And, and I should mention, the reason that's important is that the carriers track the people sending stop messages. So if you send someone a message and they reply stop, and you continue sending messages to them, you're in violation of the law. So that's why we're just, we're handling it. We get a stop message in, boom, we block that customer's number. Your number won't be able to text them unless they send resume. And you're clean, your point of sale system doesn't have to manage that. We're, we're handling it for you. Then we come to marketing. And this is where things get a little trickier. Um, 
obviously, everyone is interested in low cost, direct methods of marketing to their customers. Um, your point of sale system probably has email rewards system. It may also have text message reward system. It may have a mechanism where it can send text messages to um, to active customers or more abundant customers, you know, inactive customers to try to reactivate them. We are building out a platform right now where you can do that directly on us, just export a list of numbers from your point of sale system, load it into our platform, put together a message and send it out. The important thing there is to use common sense because you're allowed to send messages to people that you have a business relationship with. They're assumed to have opted in. But what does that mean? Uh, if you send a message, you know, if your store has been open for 20 years and collecting mobile numbers for 20 years and you send a message to everyone that's ever purchased there, you're going to get a bunch of stop responses. Um, but uh, you're safe sending messages to active customers and something within reason, say people, people who have um, their last purchase was say more than three months, less than seven months ago, something like that. So you will just want to try to kind of reactivate them, send a dollar off coupon to them or send a dollar off of add-ons to people that are more active, you know, two dollars off your an order of wings with your next order as opposed to ten dollars off your next order that you might send to people that you're trying to pull back in um, the important thing in both cases is that we're going to trickle out the traffic one of the things that the carriers have implemented on a per campaign level per number level is throttling of messages per minute. So in the past, systems would go out and say, well, I'm going to send 1,500 messages out now. And that's, of course, a bad idea anyway, because you don't want to get a blast of orders. You want the orders to be spread out so you're not swamping your, your people. But the point of sale systems, where they can drive this, they generally don't have that capability. They're just going to go, here's a list of here's a list of numbers, send this message, and it would blast out to, you know, 1,000, 1,500 people. That's now a problem because you hit these throttles and the traffic gets blocked. So we'll be trickling out the traffic. Um, and, and again, using that example of, send, say, sending a coupon to 1,500 customers, you have some common sense, you know, uh, curbs on it. You know, you're going to send it between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. local time, Monday through Thursday, because, you know, you, you certainly don't want to send it out Friday afternoon and generate more traffic during your peak hours. So that that period I just mentioned, that's 1,440 minutes. So in that example, we'd be sending out about one message per minute. And since we're watching the stop responses in real time, Our system is going to react to that. If you start seeing a high stop stop response rate, which the carriers say is anything over 5%, our system will pause the campaign and we would reach out to you and look at the traffic because maybe it's the wording of the message you're sending, or maybe it's, you know, could you tell me what this list of numbers is? Oh, it's people who have not purchased, their last purchase was between one in four years ago? No, that's not a good idea. <laughs> so we'll try to give you guidance on that. Um, although I admit we will be learning as we go on this, as we ramp up more and more campaigns, um, because we're just trying to keep track of the kind of responses that we're seeing. But in general, again, if you use common sense and you send an appropriate coupon to appropriate people, you get no spam reports, very few opt-outs because they're active customers. They know who you are. Yeah. And they wouldn't be your customer if they didn't like your pizza. So it's generally not a problem. Um, okay, so that that actually covered pretty much everything 
that I had to say on the text messaging. Does anybody have any questions on that? I'm currently not seeing it on here right now. I know a lot of the questions that I was actually writing down, you answered as you got to it. You're just so good at it. So <laughs> this is the one time I got stumped. But um, why don't you, uh, what, what is the biggest question that you get about it? One, one of the sticky areas that people have the most, the hardest time really understanding about implementing this into their own systems? Um, or the trickiest, maybe the trickiest part of integration? It, well, I mean, it, the biggest question I get right now from people is what are the options? Because they want to do something with text messaging, but they don't know what the possibilities are and that's one of the reasons that I wanted to do this and kind of lay out you know the simplest one mm -hmm. is to put the option into the phone system and yeah. just use that to push people from phones to the web ordering because that just benefits everybody and, and the, the integration um, into the phone system is relatively simple it's a matter of it, kind it, of educating it, people to get it yes yeah it's something we can do in in a matter of minutes. Now, I should mention, there is a cost. Um, the, all of these different types of traffic are going to be different packages. That simplest one of turning it on in the phone system, there is a $30 a month cost for that because we have a cost to send the messages out. We have a cost even for the shared campaign. It's um, There's some administrative overhead. So we do that, that is something we're not including in our base package. But again, we're seeing a real benefit to people in pushing traffic from the phones to the um, online ordering. Mm. Well, and as with everything, there is a cost. It doesn't, it's not for free, but right. I mean, it sounds right. like it's, it, in the long run, to, to manage uh, over tech staff, it sounds like it's a, an easy, relatively simple solution to, to integrate. It's definitely a good first step and could be the only solution you really need. I also found three other companies that offer that kind, that specific service with the auto attendant offering text messages, and they're all in the eighty or ninety dollar a month range. So, I think we're we're more than competitive there. Um, by the way, that is a feature, that is a service that we are planning on offering even to people that are not current phone customers, but it will be at a higher cost because there'll be calls coming in and going back out for it. So then the other packages, the delivery notifications, the marketing, they're all going to have different costs that are somewhat volume based. Um, and honestly, I have not pinned down what the package pricing is going to be, but anyone that is interested in it should reach out to pizza cloud and we'll talk through um talk through your size your volume and so on because there like with the marketing it's somewhat related to your call volume your your kind of raw size but also the maturity of your store um i asked a number of customers um how many customers does your store have in your database and they looked at it and some of them said you know a thousand those would be younger stores smaller stores um wow. some said ten thousand i had one say fifteen thousand but that's a big sports pub that's been open for 10 12 years they just have a very large customer base so if you're going to be sending marketing messages out Again, I don't think you would send them to every customer and you wouldn't send them too frequently. I had one person um, just a day or two ago ask me uh, about sending a message to their entire customer base every day with like what the special of the day is. And I and I oh. had to say, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. you don't want to you don't want to do that because a it's going to cost you, you know, even with big bulk pricing there, because she's talking about, you know, 60,000 messages a month, Jeez. you know, you're talking a lot of money over the course mm -hmm. of the month. And if you send a message every day to your entire customer base, you're going to have a lot of people opt out over the course of a month. You're going to have a third of your people opt out because it's going to annoy them. 
And uh, yeah, you know, she asked, well, what do you recommend? And I said, weekly, do it weekly. Weekly would be okay. It, that'll be reasonably priced and probably just as effective, honestly. And um, I don't think it'll annoy people. So uh, again, got to use some common sense in here. But yeah, uh, let's say you said the cost. I mean, the monetary cost alone is enormous. Let alone what it's going to cost you in customers just getting aggravated. I couldn't imagine getting something every day from a person. Good, good on you for yeah. stopping, leading her right, man. <laughs> Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I have some because uh, you you look at your email and you look at the, you know, you subscribe, you give your email to a retailer and you get an email every single day from them. Do you look at those emails? No, <laughs> you just delete. No. Them. Um, well, but if it's I, something reasonable. Yeah, I mean, well, and you're absolutely right. It's just about the how often you get them um and what they're offering make sure it's something that's you know of value otherwise you'll lose them that way too even you know it might not be all the time but if it's nothing they're not getting anything out of it you know you got to keep them enticed otherwise what's the point in getting them um right i wanted to ask you um just in the in the labor um field today basically everybody's having a hard time getting employees and i know you said that um you can do this from off-site a lot of this can be managed even with um, not even the text, but I think you had said uh, call you, center and like phone. Call, yeah, call centers too. Are you finding a lot yes. of people? Is it a best a better option for people who are understaffed to do it offsite and kind of you know contract that out to these people? Or yes, what do you recommend uh, on that? We're we have uh, fourteen or fifteen active call centers right now. Um, one call center, uh, so, so several of them are outsourced call centers where it's not your staff, it's the call center staff taking mm -hmm. orders, you know, so the calls come in, they flow through our phone system, they go to the agents, we're popping the point of sale system. Uh, the complexity there is that the point of sale system has to support call center because just like in your store, a call comes in, and you walk up to a POS station and it pops to that customer, but it's already in your store. No, you know, it's only your store on that POS system. In the call center, we tell the POS system, here is a call from this number to this store number, and it has to connect to that store and bring up that customer account. No. Yeah. Uh, which it may be doing directly, it may be doing through uh, API integration, there's a fair amount of complexity there. Uh, so um, Arrow POS does it extremely well. Uh, Thrive does it well. A few mm -hmm. other companies uh, can do it. Um, some but you are seeing support. a lot of that. Yes. Yeah, I mean, okay. we're involved with about 600 stores on call centers in one form or another. And so... Again, some of these are outsourced. Some of them are simply a multi-unit operator doing their own small call center. So you yeah. have five locations, you have a big office in one location, you put four, five, six stations in there and you staff it when you want to. And the way our system works is it knows whether the call center is staffed basically. So call comes in for you know store number two, it, goes through the normal thing. Is it a holiday? No. Are we open? Yes. Then it looks at the call center. Is mm -hmm. it staffed? And is there anyone available? If there is, then they get the call. If not, then it rings in the store. That way, um, you know, because again, if you're doing a small call center of your own like that, would you want to staff it at 10 a.m. on a Wednesday? Probably not. Yeah. You know, you staff it during your busy hours when you're yeah. going to get the benefit. And the reason you're going to do it, it's not just about labor. Um, the average ticket taken in the call center, it tends to be two, three, four dollars higher than taken in the store, particularly during the busy hours, because the uh, the staff is not distracted. They're not doing, you know, six other things and they don't see a bunch of calls waiting and there aren't people standing in front of them, you know, at the counter. 
They're only taking the phone orders. They have both hands on the keyboard, headset on. They're not distracted. And they are trained and supervised to always ask for the upsell. So instead of, you know, your order is $35. It'll be ready in 20 minutes. Thank you. Goodbye. And going on to the next call, they confirm the order. They ask if you'd like to add an appetizer or dessert item. And uh, it drives up the average ticket. So even on the outsource yeah. call centers, you're usually in the black on the cost of the call center because they may be charging you a dollar twenty-five or a dollar fifty to take that order, but if the average ticket's four dollars higher, you're in the black right there. The other thing is uh, the staff in the store is much happier because the they hate the phones generally in the store. The phones are an annoyance. You know, you're trying to, you're on the make line, you're making a pizza. If it's a small store and the same people are making product and answering phones and serving at the counter and you're running back and forth, the phone is an interruption of yeah. every other thing you're trying to do. <clears throat> and uh, and it, it causes mistakes because you're interrupting what you're doing. They're noisy. They bother diners sitting in the restaurant, you know, so when you pull those phone calls out of the store, everybody is happier. Um, and again, if you're not doing a good job of answering your phones today because you're understaffed and you put them to the call center and they do do a good job, you know, what if you were losing just one or two or three orders a day? Because you have too many abandoned calls. Well, you know, three orders a day at $30, $35 an order, there's $100 a day that you may be losing in revenue right. that you pick up when you go to the call center. Um, so there's, there's a lot of side benefits, some you wouldn't really expect. Now, in terms of just letting people answer from home, uh, again, with the mobile app we have, this is now much easier than it was just a few months ago. We have a number of customers who have a phone at home. You know, mm. the owner has one or two phones at home and they have their kids or spouse or themselves when they're at home. They'll press a button to log on that phone and they start taking calls. And then they just use remote desktop to take over one of the POS stations in the store. That way that they have no extra cost for hardware and other than that extra phone previously. And uh, the point of sale system is not doing anything special. They're just using remote desktop from their PC at home to take over, say the machine in the office and they're taking orders. Now we have a mobile app slash soft phone. So someone can be have an extension that's in the same queue uh, or first in queue in the store but it's on their mobile phone. So call comes in. If the person with the mobile app is logged in, then it rings first. If they're already on a call or they're not logged in, then it rings the phones in the store. So they kind of get first chance at the calls. Mm -hmm. And one person who's not distracted can take a significant percentage of the calls. And of course, again, on the labor issue, it's tough to get people to come in part time. Um, and with the cost of gas and all of that, if you say, hey, do you want to only work during the busy hours and you don't have to come in? It's a lot easier to get somebody to agree to do that. Or you have somebody yeah. who broke broke their ankle and they can't come in and be walking back and forth and standing at the counter, but they would prefer to work because they need the money. Great. They're your phone person. Let them work from home. Yeah, I've um, been that guy who broke the ankle, so I know my bosses would have appreciated that at the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Instead of losing and, that and, body on the phones, for sure. And now that we have the soft phone app, mobile app, there's no extra cost from us to do that at all. We just oh, wow. create that for you. It's just another extension. And um, there's no real training necessary. Ten minutes training and the employee is good to go. And it's up to you to do something with the remote desktop. That's between you and your POS company. But um, but almost all owners have the ability to do that because that's how they run reports and so on from home. Okay. 
Well, we've got so, uh, an audience who are hanging on all the word on your every word here. So I want to let them know again one more time that you can't ask your questions here. Um, and I'm going to basically let John, I'm going to let you run down what you want everybody. You just, you have to sum it up into a, you know, just brief synopsis. What, why should we, we should be looking at um, grabbing onto texting as the next evolution in online ordering. And then if anybody has questions, we'll get to those while you're uh, s summarizing there. Um, yeah, on the text messaging, if you're already on Pizza Cloud and you're interested in um, enabling text messaging in the phone system, just shoot an email to sales at pizzacloud.net or support at pizzacloud.net, actually, either one. And that's something that we can turn on for you very quickly. And we can flip it on. You can test it. If you don't like it, you know, we turn it back off the same way we do with everything else. Um, okay. By the way, at the beginning here, you said if people call Pizza Cloud, I'm most likely to answer the phone. I actually have like 10 people on staff. So if you call support, there's a whole crew of people that take your call. I'm I'm happy to take calls from customers, but uh, we answer our phones 24-7. Nice. Um, so <laughs> I like that. Um, and, and I do want to apologize, Michael Grant. Um, they, there are there were questions from 225 earlier, so I just kind of scroll kept scrolling them up. So we're going to go oh. with the first one. Michael Grant jumped in. Uh, food tech support spelled F O O D T E C. I am I assume that's a, a third. Uh, it's a POS or POS. Uh, Michael, yeah. if you wanted to clarify on that, if I'm completely butchering it, or if if you know what he means, John, go ahead. Uh, question is, are you asking about text message support or call center support? It just says um, text support and question mark. So is that? I am not sure where food tech is on text messaging support uh, for delivery okay. notifications. I actually was planning on reaching out to them um, this coming week. Okay. He's Michael does say text message. He did jump in. Text message. Yes. I have to reach out to them and, and ask them about that. Um, on the call center side, they do not currently have a call center solution. There is an API integration that works with them, but it's a little bit a little bit kludgy, but we have people that are using it. Um, but on the text message side, I will find out. Okay. I will find out where they are on that. Um, I know that they were working on that. I think one of the things that hap has happened with several point of sale companies is they were rolling along and building a uh, text messaging solution and then suddenly realized, wait a minute, the rules actually changed and okay. we have a problem. Yeah. Well, I mean, and then you got to do that pivot right away. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I see. I see the other questions. Um, yeah. Is there an additional Angie, cost to their? Yeah, well, additional cost to the phone system. Yes, uh, there is. With the to to turn on just the text messaging in uh, the phone system. Uh, right now, we're thinking thirty dollars a month uh, for that. We'll okay. see what feedback we get from people. But I have about fifteen people live on that right now, and they're very happy with it. Um, and I'm guessing I'm getting a lot more um, people after this asking for it. Um, then we got Paul Gaynor. Does it integrate with Microworks POS system? For text messaging, again, I, I am not sure on the text messaging. I am next week. I'm going to literally going to spend reaching out to a two dozen POS systems to find out where they're at with that. If they have, so if Microworks has text message support, the delivery notifications, then we will integrate with it. It's not a question of whether we can integrate with them. It's whether they have it at all. If they have text messaging, then we'll integrate with them because mm -hmm. uh, we, we can integrate with anybody. So, and that kind of answers Ethan's question about uh, Toast as well. Um, if they have text message support, we'll integrate with them. So, and uh, and one of the things also is a number of POS systems have done text messaging, but you have to do it from a different number. In other words, they cannot turn on text messaging on your store number they do it with a separate number, which of course is going to confuse your customers. 
Whereas when we flip it on, it's your store telephone number. Um, let's see, and then we have a question. You take a about full call and tech or not? We do we do hosted PBX cellular backup internet, so we keep your phones and people working when your internet goes down. And uh, we're now adding in the text messaging. Uh, we do text messages for people who are not their phone company. I think uh, a lot of people will end up switching over to us for the phone service once they're working with us, even on the text messaging, because we tend to offer more features and better support than most, um, most companies do. Um, Okay. I think I I don't know if it was just me you were breaking up on that. If somebody's question was there, uh, if they didn't get the answer, you can let me know. We can make sure it definitely gets answered. But got most of that. But that was, again, could okay. just sorry about that. No, yeah, no worries, man. Um, it, and I guess was that the Richie Gaddis question about what does Hunger Rush support in the way of text messaging and call center support? Uh, I'm gonna say the same answer there as on the others that I have to talk to Hunger Rush in okay. terms of the text messaging. Uh, Hunger Rush uh, does not have dedicated call center support at this time. Um, there is API integration. It is possible to do it with uh, a third party system in the call center but it's a little bit a little bit difficult um but um it's in the book i, I have to ask about the text messaging yeah yeah you're looking into it so and angie neighbors uh jumped back in um uh, she says that our company's been using the soft phone app from pizza cloud and it's been amazing she highly recommends it for staff that is working from home or away from the phone system we really like being able to open the app and contact our customers from our office phone number instead of our customers seeing our personal cell phone number. That's really cool. I hadn't thought about that, but that is nice that it, yep. yeah, so that very cool. So, well, again, guys, everybody, thank you so much for sticking around and all your attention. Very captive audience today. Everybody for chiming in with your questions, Angie, Richie, Michael, Ethan, Paul, all of you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, we will put this up at pmq.com. Um, you can also I, reach out to Pizza Cloud. I'm sure he'll have this information available either there or, as he said, they're always answering their phones. So right. Uh, and and I should mention, uh, since I kind of blazed through the call center stuff and the call center stuff, there's a lot of questions relating to the POS system. So anyone that's interested in call center or having people answer calls from home, reach out to us. We'll talk to you about your POS system. We'll look at it and let you know what the options are there. Um, again, we work with several different uh, outsourced call centers. Uh, if you're on, um, you know, if you're on Arrow, we have, there's one call center that is absolutely the best solution. If you're on Thrive, there's another one that's, uh, that's good. And, um, and then from there, you know, it just depends on the POS system uh, mm -hmm. and, and what you're looking to do, whether you want to do your own call center or outsource it. Because, again, we can help people. Anyone that has multiple locations, we have, you know, we have some 40, 50 location chains that have done their own call center. We have five location people that have done their own call center just because they want to get the ringing phones out of the store. It's not so much about them saving money on labor. It's about improving efficiency, not losing calls better environment in the stores, happier staff, and higher average ticket. So uh, if they also save some money on labor, that's great. But since they're understaffed already, they're not going to cut anybody. <laughs> they just yeah. handle, handle the labor shortage better. They're not, they're not eliminating any staff. They're already understaffed. So Right. That's great. And I think that's what people need to know. It's not, not necessarily cutting cutting jobs it's about just kind of repositioning them putting them somewhere else so yeah yeah it's uh the the side benefits are are much greater than the labor savings um it, it really is remarkable i mean when we turned on the first call center with the first few stores and i i was visiting some of the stores 
and we were actually having lunch in the store and a staff member came up and said, I had no idea how stressed I was by the phones until they stopped ringing. And she turned to the owner of the store who was there and said, don't ever make the phones in here ring again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, as a, an operator, I can attest to that. It does add that stress level that can be, it sounds like it can be very much avoided and actually beneficial. So I'm excited to, for everybody to kind of get that hands-off approach almost to the, I don't want to say hands-off of your phones, but, you know, making them work for you and not stressing you out. So, John, thank yep. you so much for all your time, brother. Um, anybody else, reach out to pizzacloud.net. You got any questions, John or one of his friendly staff will be there to answer them. So thank you guys so much again for joining us at the PMQ webinar series. We'll hopefully uh, see you guys again at the next one. Um, thanks again for your attention. And until then, uh, you know, pizza to the people and be nice to your neighbors. Thanks, John. Thanks a lot. Bye.